place where grace and truth meet. We do this by helping you know Jesus, discover you, experience life, and make your mark in the life of others. Parkway Serve Day is next Sunday, May 28th. This will take the place of our regular services. To serve at one of our 10 projects, please sign up on our app. If you have any questions or need more information, please visit Info Central in our lobby. Also, don't forget to save clothes from your closet cleanout for the clothing drive event on June 24th. We are asking for good and clean clothes to assist families in going back to school. For information on when and where to bring your clothes, please visit Info Central in the lobby where you can connect with Connie Cook. Grit Men's event is coming up on Saturday, June 10th at 5.30 p.m. And men, we don't want you to miss it. This is for men ages high school and up. There will be manly competitions, great food, giveaways, a guest speaker, and an incredible worship experience. Register on the Parkway app. As we transition to the message, we ask that you help us to limit distractions by remaining seated if possible. Silencing your cell phones and limiting your conversations to provide those here and those online the best possible worship experience. Thank you so much. Now, let's get our notes out and get ready for week four of the journey. Good morning, Parkway Life. Good morning. Man, it's good to be in the house today. Uh, pastor said something just a minute ago, and I, I don't often correct him, but I'm going to correct him. He said, uh, he said, Alec has to speak today. I don't have to speak. I get to speak today. I'm honored to speak, preach to you. I believe you're the best church in the entire world, and I love you with my whole heart. It's an honor to preach today, and uh, I, I, don't, I don't take this lightly. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be up here and talking to you today. I believe I have something for you. But he is right. I am tired. <laughs> uh, it's, it's been a long evening for us, and uh, I just want to say thank you. Um, man, if you're new to this church, you can't mess up by going to Parkway. <laughs> uh, this place has loved me. It's loved my wife. It's loved my wife's family um, who lives in Alabama. And that's just how can you have people that love not only your family but your extended family. And uh, I can't thank you enough for praying. Some of you have fasted for uh, Taylor's grandmother, Gwen. And I, I can't thank you enough. The prayers are felt. Um, and, man, I, I'm just thankful for a church that when they say they're going to pray, they pray. And um, I'm so, so thankful today. My, my sweet wife is obviously with her, her grandmother today, and um, she's also 38 weeks pregnant. <laughs> so uh, we're going through an interesting little season here. And, uh, but all things work together. And uh, I, I, I want to stop right here before I get into my message, and it's not in my notes. And that's the thing with us Keatings. We don't go to our notes. <laughs> we kind of get off subject sometimes. <laughs> Uh, but I want to tell you today that uh, Gwen, is, is, she's not doing well. Uh, she has stage four brain cancer, and, and things aren't going well. Um, but me and my wife were talking, and there's pain. There's pain when you love someone and, and you see them going downhill like this. And there's also peace. And, man, what a unique thing that we have as Jesus followers that the sting of death is not permanent for us. Come on. Listen, it, it, hurts, it, it hurts to lose somebody. It really does. Um, but man, what a joy and hope we have in Jesus. What a peace we have that even in our darkest days, we can still say, I've got hope today. I've got hope through the valley of the shadow of death, and I will fear no evil. And I'm happy for that hope today. Is anybody else happy for the hope that we have in Jesus? Man, what a hope. We're blessed. We're blessed, church. We're blessed. We're blessed to know Jesus. There's so many people that don't know him, especially like you and I. And man, we're, we're blessed to know Jesus. Don't ever forget that you're blessed to know the King of Kings and have an intimate personal relationship with him. He knows your name. He knows how many hairs are on your head. Don't forget that. Don't forget that he knows you, and he sees you, and he sees you in your season, and that's what I want to speak to you today on. I want to speak to you. We're in the journey. What a fantastic series this has been. Pastor, uh, you know, recently I, I've said, uh, Pastor sometimes has something he does called keeching, which is his version of teaching, which means he gets a little fired up when he teaches. He has not been keeching lately. He has been preaching, all right? And it has been incredible. And uh, I'm honored to speak in this series. The series is supposed to go the journey of life from 
what pastor said, the crib to the grave. How, how do we travel on this journey of life? And I want to speak today, but I feel like this is a little teachy. I feel like it's a little teachy, so I want you to take some notes. Because when you're in class and you're learning, you're going to forget it if you don't write it down. So take some notes. I even made it easy for you. I'm going to give you four points today. I'm going to make it as easy as possible. I'm, I'm just, maybe if I titled this, it would be transitioning through seasons. Transitioning through seasons. And I really don't like the word seasons, I have to admit, okay? The word seasons is a Christian word. It's, 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 it's very Christianese, as we call it in Bible college. Uh, there's just some terms you only hear in church. And uh, seasons is, I'm just going through a season, Pastor. That's just something you don't hear uh, working at your job on a real basis. There's just some things you hear in church, and seasons is one of them, and we hear it all the time. And so, I, I, to be honest with you, it's not my favorite word, but there's no better word to fit what we go through in life than seasons. And you and I go through seasons. It's just who we are. It's what happens. It's life. We go through these seasons, and the, every person, every human goes through a season in their life or seasons. Um, but there's one difference between us and everybody else. See, when you go through seasons, uh, you have the ups and downs. You have the mountaintops, and you get the valleys. You got the, good, you got the good seasons when everything's going all right, and, man, all the kids are happy, and... Uh, you know, the, the bank account looks good, life looks good, and then you got the worst days ever, and you had the horrible seasons, and everybody's got them, but there's a difference between you and somebody else going through a season. See, when you go through a season, oh, by the way, Christians go through seasons as well. <laughs> Don't think that just because you're having a tough time that you, you're some unique Christian. We all go through tough times. Becoming a Christian does not exempt you from difficulties in life. It's, it's going to happen to you, okay? But here's the difference. When you go through it, you have the comforter on your side. When you go through hard times, you have the king of kings whispering in your ear that he loves you. you. When you go through tough times, when you go through hard seasons, you have a God that says he will mourn with you. That is nothing that the world can copy. It's nothing the world can duplicate. You are different in your season than everybody else. But that being said, you still go through a season. Life can be difficult. It can be hard and You'll hear the pastors here very often. Pastor said it today. We want you to take your next step. And next steps is another way of saying step into another season. We always want you to take a next step because we don't want you to become uh, uh, stagnant in your faith. I want you to listen to me. We, we, we can, as Christians, we can say, oh, I checked the box today, man. I went to church, but I went to church two times this month. I'm good, man. I checked the box. Life is good. Uh, and we think we got it all figured out and we become stagnant in our faith. That's why we continually push you, a lovingly Christian push, to take your next step. Because God does not want you to become stagnant in your life. And if you become stagnant, you'll forget who he really is because he's a God that's on the move. And so we want you to take your next step. Today's a great day because you got discovered. You can take your next step. You can get on a team. You can serve. Do you know why serving's so good? Because Jesus did it. You can, you, <laughs> we kind of want to be like him. You know, he, he kind of had everything figured out. So, uh, we're going to serve too, and you can, you can step into discover. You can step into baptism in your next step. You can come to outpour and be filled with the Spirit and take that next step of your life. You are supposed to take next steps. You're supposed to keep walking. You're supposed to go into your next season because we don't serve a God who wants your soul and then leaves you. We serve a God he wants to save you. He wants to free you. He wants to redeem you. He wants to refine you. He wants to call you. He wants to change everything about you. Yes, first and foremost, he wants your soul, but he's got so much more planned for you. So I want to tell you today, before I get into the, the, the meat of this message, don't get, don't stop in a season of salvation. We want you to be safe above all else, but don't stop in that season. I think it's, it's, a, it's a disease in the Christian church in America that we can, we can come to church, we can get saved, and then we can forget all about Jesus. Listen, a life with Jesus, a relationship with Jesus is not a box to be checked. It's a life to be lived. 
in there is every single day, he's got more for you. He's got more for you. You talking about he's got more money for me? That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about he's got more calling for you. He's got more, he's got more anointing for you. He, he, he's got more people around you that need to know about him for you. There's more souls that need to be saved that you can reach that I can never reach. There is more for you. Don't stop where you're at. Keep moving. Keep moving, keep going, because he's got more. He's got more. I heard it said one time that your current season is not your homestead, it's your hotel. Don't plant your roots. Keep on moving. God's got more for you. God's got more. I want to look at a verse today. I'm going to preach through this verse. You're going to be pretty confused when I read it, and that's okay. I'm going to preach through it today. Uh, I'm going to go line by line, but first I want to read it to you. So if you would, would you stand with me this morning as we go through the Word of God? It's a great verse in the book of Proverbs. If you're ever looking for a good book to read uh, within the Bible, Proverbs is a simple one to read. It's just full of wisdom. In fact, uh, as biblical scholars, they call this wisdom literature. And this is the book of Proverbs, uh, chapter 30, verses 24 through 28. Here we go. You're going to be a little confused. You ready? Four things are among the smallest on earth, but they are extremely wise. Ants, as creatures, aren't strong, but they store away their food in the summer. Badgers, as creatures, aren't powerful, but they make their homes in the rocks. Locusts don't have a king, but they, make, but they march together in ranks. You can catch lizards in your hand, but they are in king's palaces. I told you you'd be confused. Would you bow your heads with me? Jesus, thank you so much for each and every single person under the sound of my voice, everybody that's online, our life houses, everybody that's in the room. Lord, I thank you for each and every single person. God, I pray what is said today is not my words, but you, and it affects somebody today in the room, Lord. Show us how to walk through seasons the way you intended, Lord. We, we want to draw closer to you today. Remove distractions, God, so we can focus in on you. Lord, we love you so much. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. I want you to leave that verse back up there. What a good verse that you have no idea what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> Lizards? Lizards? Oh, this is going to be fun. I want you to notice that in this verse, uh, there is no elephants. <laughs> there is no grizzly bear. There is no great white shark. There are little bitty, tiny, not important little animals that nobody really cares about. Uh, I mean, you ever looked at an ant and been like, I really care for this ant. This is deeply important to me. God didn't mention these big animals. I don't see PETA fighting for ants, okay? It's just, like, I, I, when I read this, I asked myself, why did God choose some of the smallest and most like non-important animals. They're just so, they're so small and minuscule. What, what does it really matter? And I, I think God says so many things in his word. And, and I, I think he used the small animals to convey a big message. And, and I wanna stop here before, before I keep going that, that God sometimes will use the smallest things in your life to speak the largest messages. It's the simplest things. We make life so difficult, y'all. <laughs> we make it so difficult. And God the whole time is like, hey, dummy, <laughs> it's simple. We don't serve a simple God. We serve a God who makes things simple. And, and, and look, look at this verse right here, 1 Kings 11, 1 Kings, um, 11 13. He said, go out and stand on the mount before the Lord, and behold, the Lord passed by, and a great strong wind tore through the mountains, tore the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. I could preach right here. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. Mm -mm -mm. And after the fire, the sound of a low whisper. The voice that you choose to listen to will determine how you experience life. There's a lot of big voices in our life. There's a lot of things that we can listen to. There's a lot of loud voices in our world. In the world you and I experience, if we can, we can turn on Fox, we can turn on CNN, and if we're not careful, 
we can confuse their voices with the voice of God. And we can hear fear, we can hear anger, and we can hear division. And we're going, God, what are you doing? What are you saying? The world's going to hell in a handbasket. What's happening? And the whole time he's speaking to you still in a small voice. I think it's so beautiful, that, that verse, that it wasn't the wind, it wasn't the earthquake, it wasn't even the fire, these magnificent things. It's a still small voice that spoke to Elijah. It's simple. If you're looking for a complex move of God to, to prove you something, I don't want you to miss him in the simplicity. If you're stepping into a difficult season of life, I, want you, I don't want you to miss his still small voice in the middle of the chaos. See, the voice of God is more powerful than a tsunami, but it comes in the vessel of a raindrop. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. It's in the simplest things. You can be wondering, how is this God even real? How could, how could he even be real? I don't understand. And you're wondering, you're going, God, show me a sign, and you're walking around. You never looked and stopped looking at the miracle that you are in the mirror and going, oh my goodness. Maybe the sign was right in front of me. It's in the simplest things that we tend to overlook every single day. And in the midst of a difficult season, we can be begging God to show up in these magnificent ways. And, and he's just right there comforting and loving through the most difficult times. That's what he does. That's who he is. And he speaks to these small, small ways. And reminds us that he's got it all figured out. I want to give you four points today on how to walk through the seasons of life the way God intended you to walk through them. Sometimes life's supposed to be more simple than we really make it. Number one, as I walk through this verse, number one is prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. Y'all are going to like this, man. Let's, I want to go back to the first part of this verse. It says in verse 25, ants as creatures aren't strong, but they store away food in the summer. Will y'all put a picture of an ant on the screen? That's an ant. I don't know if y'all ever seen one before. Um, in case you forgot, that's what they look like. Somebody came up to me uh, on the production team before service and said, is that an ant? I've never seen one that looks like that. I'm like, that is what every ant ever has looked like. That is literally what they look like. Um, so that's an ant, uh, if, you, if you haven't seen one before. And... Um, as I studied for this message, I want to tell you, I did not know that ants store away food for winter. I thought only bears did that. I didn't, I, I, I just, I didn't know. I didn't know that ants get all fat and sassy for the winter. I didn't know that me and ants were the same way. I didn't. Now, let me ask you a question. Have you ever seen a fat ant? And I'm not talking about your sister, your, 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 your aunt. Your, I, I'm not talking about your mama's sister. That was good, and you know it. If she asked who said that, don't say I did, okay? Tell them it was Pastor Cody. Um, I'm just messing. Somebody later is going to get me for that. I love it. I love it. <laughs> the ant prepares himself for winter while he's in the summer. While he's in the summer, he gets ready for the winter, and he carries things into the next season while still being in the one he is in. You see, seasons of life of God, seasons of life with God build upon each other, and they help you prepare for the next one. I can't handle things now. I can handle things now that I used to not be able to handle. See, God is progressing me, and he's building up maturity, spiritual maturity within me, and he's doing the same thing with you, but we have to prepare for the next season. We cannot become content and comfortable with where we're at because God has more. So do not become so content with where you're at that you cannot look forward to what God has coming for you. What would happen if this ant didn't prepare in advance? If in the middle of the summer, what would happen if this ant said, you know what, it's not feeling it. I'm just going to chill this summer. It's like, it's warm, I'm chilling, I love it. Food's everywhere. I'm just, the ant would starve, the colony would go down, everything would, would, would disappear. We are the same way. See, we often have a plan. We have a plan, right? We have, we have a plan for life. It's all, I've got, I've got, yeah, it's all going to work out. 
I got a plan for the next season. Whatever happens, he's got me. You know, I got it. We got a plan, but we have no preparation. And we, we equate our plan with preparation. Oh, I'm prepared for the next season, man. I, I, I got a plan. I want to tell you that a plan without preparation is just delusion. You want to be financially free? Let me give you an example. You want to be financially free, but you never sit down to make a budget? It's a plan without preparation. You want to have a good marriage? You want to have, you want to have a godly marriage, but you, you, you refuse to communicate with your spouse? There's a plan without action, a plan without preparation. It's, it's just delusion. It won't work. We have to prepare ourselves for what God has coming, has coming down the road for us. And while we don't know, like, oh, I know what next season's going to hold, man. I, we don't know what the next season has for us. But while I'm in my current season, God is developing something in me to prepare me for what he has in the future. But here's the thing. Man, I think this is so good. You ever seen an ant carry something just way bigger than itself? I saw an ant one time drag a Dorito. It was incredible. <laughs> Full on Dorito, all right? It was orange with the dust. I wanted to lick the ant, uh, but I didn't. Um, <laughs> I don't know how they carry something that's like 30 times larger than they do, but I think you and I are a lot like the ant. When we step into a new season, we feel like we're carrying something bigger than us, and here's the truth, you are. And here's another truth, you can't do it. <laughs> Listen, God is putting something onto us in our current season that we go, okay, really, I cannot handle this right now. I cannot carry this, God. And he's like, hey, um, that's the I don't want you to carry it by yourself. And so we get stuck in, the, in, this, in this cycle where God is trying to develop things within us. He's trying to build our spiritual muscles. And we say, oh, God, it can't handle that. <laughs> no, I wanted to you know, in the next season, but I, I really didn't want to do any work. So like, I don't, I don't want to do that. So, and he's like, hey, if you'll just listen to me, I want to develop you. I want to build you. You're not going to get stronger unless you, you carry a Dorito way bigger than you. I, I want to develop your spiritual muscles a little bit. And I want to help you because you can't do this on your own. Man, we're so eat up with pride as humans. We're so eat up with it. And don't act like it's a new thing. It's been since the dawn of time. <laughs> since, Eve, since Eve took a bite of the fruit, we've been eat up with pride. We love it, man. And what happens is we begin to think when success comes, when a season of good times come, when those mountaintops come and everybody's happy and you're sitting on a pontoon boat and everything is good and life is just, you know, breezy, we can begin to think that I did this. <laughs> you see all this? This is me. This is me, baby. I did it all. I'm the one that got my good marriage. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the one that got this good job. I'm the one that did this and this and this. And I am so spiritually mature. I got it, man. And what happens is if we begin to carry things without God, we will develop pride. And then when we fall into our season of failure, we like to blame everything back on God. <laughs> well, I carried everything the first time, God. I did it all myself. Where were you when I needed you? Because, see, when we talk about seasons, oftentimes we think just about the bad seasons. But if you don't prepare on your mountaintop, you will not be ready in your valley. You have to prepare now. And that doesn't mean we dread the bad things coming. Oh, I'm just getting ready for, for this horrible tragedy. No, no, no. What happens is I'm going to put myself closer to Jesus so that when the inevitable bad time comes, I'm safe with him. I'm safe with him. You have to start now, though. If you wait till you're in the valley, you won't be able to look up at the mountain. You have to start now. The pastor always prays this prayer, man, and it's been messing with me. I'm going to be honest with you, messing with me. And uh, he don't even know that it messes with me. But he, sometimes he just says stuff. I'm like, man, that's good. I don't know if he intended it to be good, but I'm going to preach about it later, and I'm going to say I came up with it. Um, <laughs> I'll give you credit. He says this prayer, and man, he said it one time in, in, in a staff meeting, and I was like, oh, that's, oh, that's good. <laughs> and, and he said, we were praying about something, and he said, I want God to work in this situation that when he's done with it, 
only he can get the praise for it. Oh my, I can't really whistle, but that makes me want to whistle, you know? It's like, you understand how good that is? I wish that would become our prayer. It's become my prayer. And, and man, you talk about a pride buster right there. That when, hey God, I need you to work in this situation. But when it's done, I want everybody around me to be able to look at the situation and go, I know that was God because he's stupid. <laughs> he can't handle it. <laughs> if you want your life to be a living testimony, you heard about this, you've been in church life. We want to be a living testimony. You want your life to be a living testimony? Start praying for God to do it in a way that only he gets the glory for. I really want people to look at my situation and go, uh, oh, the youth group's growing, God's doing great things, and they go, that's God. <laughs> it's got to be God because there ain't no way he can do it because that's what I'm thinking. There's no way I could do this. It is only God. So prepare now before the success. Prepare now before the bad season so that when those times come, you're ready. Here's my second point. You ready? Posture yourself. Posture yourself. The next part of the verse right here is badgers as creatures aren't powerful, but they make their homes in rocks. Man, I might, I might do a little preaching here, okay? Uh, put up a picture of the badger. That ain't a, what y'all think a badger looks like <laughs> because this is not an American badger. This is what they call a rock badger, and I think they are so cute. I, my dog would kill it in two seconds, but man, I want one. It is so cute. That don't look like a badger at all. That's not even the right name for it. It should be like a, I don't even know, like a, a cuddly rat or something. I don't know. But that's, that's a rock badger. They're, they're found in the Middle East and, and in Asia, and there's something really unique about the rock badger. They got another funky name, but I, I, I can't pronounce it, so we're going with rock badger, okay? Some versions say it's rock badger. Man, they, they do something unique. You see, you see him? He can't defend himself very well, <laughs> obviously. He looks like a chihuahua. Um, he cannot defend himself very well. There's not much he can do against the enemy. Hang with me here. He does not build a home for himself. He can't. Look at his arms. He can't build nothing. <laughs> he can't do nothing. He can't defend himself from the enemy. He cannot build a home. So this is what he does. This is why they call the rock badger, is that on cliffs or on the side of a mountain, they will hide themselves in little rocks. So good, man. I, I, I'm going somewhere with this. Because look at the verse. It says, Bad versus creatures aren't powerful, but they make their homes in the rocks. It does not have the ability to protect itself, but when it hides itself in the rock, he is covered. First Samuel verse two, chapter 2, verse 2 says, There is no one holy like the Lord. There is no one besides you. There is no... Oh, y'all catching on. There is no rock. There is no rock like our God. You see, you see where, where the writer of Proverbs was going with this, that there is no rock like our God. Listen today, you and I, we got something in common. We are infinitely flawed and infinitely vulnerable to the enemy. We can't do it by ourselves. But when we run to the rock, there is infinite safety. Infinite safety. You can't do it by yourself. You need the rock. You need the rock of ages. When the enemy comes against your life, I want to speak to somebody right now that you feel like you've been going through something. You, you feel like you're in a rough season where the enemy's been attacking you. He's been, you feel like he's attacking your family, your marriage, your kids, your job, your finances, you, everything about your life. You say, I am under attack. Can I tell you where to run? It's not to alcohol. It's not to drugs. It's not to your spouse. It is only to the rock. It is only to the rock. Nowhere else will you find safety and relief. Nowhere else will you find a, a place to stay when the weather comes of life, when the bad day comes and the storm rises up. There's nowhere else to run but the rock. And if you run there, you will be safe. Run to the rock today. You know, these badgers um, are feeble. I don't use that word often, but they're feeble. 
They're nervous, they're shy, they're tiny, they're small. They know that they are inadequate. They know that without the rocks, they won't survive. You know, you can tell somebody in the room, you can tell when you come in on a Sunday morning, and I like when the the music's playing and we're worshiping. I like to sometimes walk in from the back because I can't really see on the front row, and I sometimes like to walk in from the back a little, just a little late, and I like to see everybody worshiping. And I, can I tell you something? You can, you can tell if someone is a feeble person because they worship differently. Hear me here. When somebody is a feeble person, in, in other words, that they, they know they can't do it by themselves. You can tell because they're not crazy. They're not flamboyant. They're not jumping everywhere. And doing, you know what they are? They're passionate about their Jesus. And you can see them when they look and they have their hands up in the air that they know that without God, there's no hope. And so every moment they step into his presence, you can see a person who, who, is, who knows at the bottom of their heart that they are nothing without God. And it's a beautiful thing to see somebody worship like a rock badger that when, they, when life comes at them, they run right back to the rock. I pray in my life, I know it sounds uh, counterintuitive to be a feeble worshiper, but I wanna be a feeble worshiper to where I, when I step into the presence of God, I say, there's nowhere else I can go except to the feet of my Jesus. I am nothing without him, absolutely nothing. It is only through him. That's it. My only hope is in Jesus. And you can, see, you can see it on the face of worshipers who they have a little bit of life on them and they have a little bit of hard times on them and you can see it in their eyes and you can see it in the way they worship that they know that without Jesus, they don't know where they'd be. And without Jesus, I don't know where I'd be. I don't know about you. But I am dependent on my Jesus. Number three, surround yourself. The verse says, locusts don't have a king, but they march together in ranks. Here's a picture of a swarm of locusts. Doesn't that just look absolutely horrific? Yeah. I hate it. I, I, hate, I hate locusts, and I hate any flying creature that flies in swarms. I, I pray against them. I don't like them. <laughs> I love this part of the verse. It, it's, so, it's so simple. We make it so difficult. It's so simple. When we walk through the good seasons of life, if you're not surrounded by Jesus' followers, you will lose yourself in the success. You will. I will. Pastor will. We all will. We'll lose ourselves in the pride if we don't have others there to ground us. And when you walk through tough seasons of life, if you aren't surrounded by Jesus' followers, you will lose yourself in despair. The church is essential. The church is not an option for a Christian The church is not, I've seen it become popular that the church is not, it's an optional thing. The church is not an option for the believer. It is so vital to your Christian health. You know why? Because you need people. Right at the beginning of the Bible, it says, it says, and God created man, and he looks at him and he goes, it is not good that you were by yourself. So then he makes Eve, and then Eve messed everything up, but... It's not good for you to be by yourself. I've heard people before ask, why do y'all have all these life groups? And why, 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 why? It's just so much, man. You can't do this life alone. You wanna know why we have life groups? Because you can't do it alone. Because you're gonna go through a bad season and if you don't have the church to lean on, if you don't have your relationships and community within the church, who do you turn to? Who will hold you up? Who will be there to hold your hand when you're crying? Who will be there to rejoice with you in success? That's the church. That's the church. We just finished a life group season, and man, what a great life group season it it was. Uh, We started another one uh, right at the end of August, and if you don't hear anything else, I'll say, join a life group. Join a freedom group. Get involved with something because you'll get people around you and they're like-minded and they're chasing after the same thing that you're chasing for and they're not just chasing after money, success, and relationships, they're chasing after Jesus. And when you get people in a group and they're all chasing after Jesus, 
So much good can come when you're around people that are all chasing after Jesus. You need to be like a locust <laughs> and you need to surround yourself. Surround yourself with believers that will pick you up and encourage you when you're weak. And they'll pick you up and they'll ground you when you're wrong. And I think people overlook this sometimes. I know I've got to hurry, but people will overlook this sometimes that um, the church is there to pick them up and they all love that. You know, everybody obviously loves that. Be there when, when I'm hurting. And that's the big part of the church's job. But the church is there to also ground you and correct you when you're wrong. You need that in your life because I don't have it all figured out. And guess what? Neither do you. <laughs> and so we're all just a bunch of people that don't have it figured out, but we love Jesus. And so you can see something in me and you can encourage me in my correction. And I need that in my life and you need that in your life. So you need to surround yourself. But my last point today, my very last point, number four, let go of yourself. And this last part of the verse is the most confusing part of the verse. <laughs> it says, you can catch lizards in your hand, but they are in king's palaces. Throw up a picture of the lizard. I, don't know, I know we don't know what those look like in southeast Texas. That's not a southeast Texas lizard. Um, ours don't look that pretty, uh, but I got them all over my house, and I think lizards are so cool. I don't know why, but they're just cool, and they always scare me a little bit every time because I think they're a snake. <clears throat> it's just a lizard. <laughs> don't act like you don't do it. You know you do. You know, I thought, I don't get scared of lizards. Yeah, you do. You get scared of lizards. I like lizards, man. I think they're cool little things. And if you, you I don't know if you knew this, but they can save you 15% on your car insurance. <laughs> So let you know. <laughs> that was good. That wasn't even my notes. I was just. Oh man. Okay. <laughs> you ever uh, you ever play with a lizard as a kid? Uh, we all have. You play with a lizard, and its tail comes off, and you feel like the absolute worst human ever exists and then you're creeped out because it's still wiggling and you're like i don't know what to feel right now i'm going through a couple seasons all at once <laughs> a lizard has this unique ability that not many other animals have that it loses its tail it can be picked up it's a defense mechanism uh, that if something were to pick it up by its tail that it, it can come off and they'll live and then they'll regrow a new tail. Sometimes they'll get caught in a rock and that tail will get stuck and it'll, it'll come off. It's for their good and it, it, it regrows later, it comes back. And many times it come back stronger and actually longer. It's just, it's just this really cool thing that God made these lizards with. And in the season you're going into, the season will be dictated by what you let go of. Not all of you, not every piece of you can go into the next season with you. Not, not, not every part of you can make it. Why is that, Alec? Why, why can't I just be me and I just keep going? Because <laughs> God has a better plan. There's a song by, uh, by the band Maverick City I love. It's called the refiner. And that's what God is for us. He's a refiner. And he's refining us. And when you refine something, you're taking out the impurities. And sometimes it's painful. And sometimes it hurts. When you purify gold, you gotta heat it up to get the impurities out. And there's pain and there's, it's obviously not the best. And, but, but what happens is the end is there are, there's a pure product. God's, God wants to refine you. He does. But here's the thing. He won't refine you without you asking him to refine. He doesn't just step in and say, all right, well, let's get, let's get all the junk out the house. I know you ain't ready for it. I know you don't want it, but let's just get it all out. He's a gentleman. He waits. He waits for you and say, God, change me. 
There's some things in my life I don't like. Lord, search my heart, oh God, and create within me a clean heart. That's a statement that I want you to refine me, God. I want you to change me. I want you to burn off the things of me that are good. And so we have to let go of a part of ourselves. But don't ask God to refine you if you're not ready for it. Because there is a little bit of pain involved. (laughs) But it is nothing. The temporary pain of letting go of yourself is nothing compared to what God is replacing in that place. There is something better he has for you. There is so much more he has in store of you. And when you let go of yourself, when you take, uh, when you let go of yourself and you give God the reins of your life, you take the reins of your life out of your flawed, messed up hands and you put them in the nail scarred hands of the Savior of the world. And I think he can drive better than you. Let him refine. And your season, your season will be wasted if you don't let him refine you. Why go through this mess? Why go through this season? You're going to go through the season anyway. You might as well let God make you better. I want to go into each season, go out of each season better than I came in. And different. I want to be closer to Jesus when I come out of this season. I don't care if it's a bad season or a good season. I'm going to use all of it to get closer to Jesus. But you have to let go of yourself, and it's, 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 a, it's an interesting process. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, one of the greatest verses, it says this. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, and see, the new has come. It doesn't matter today what type of season you're in. If you're on the mountaintop or you're in the valley, it does not matter. I want to tell you, you are a new creation. He's doing a new thing in you. There's new things he has in store for you. There's more calling. There's more anointing. There's more blessings. You're going to get closer to him, but you've got to let him do it. You've got to let him do it. Would you stand with me today? I know when we're walking through life, and life is just a life of seasons. We're always in some type of season. We feel because of our past, if I look back at all the seasons of my life, I can see a lot of mistakes. I know y'all don't see mistakes uh, when y'all look back at your life, but I see a lot of mistakes in my life. And I want to tell you today that if you're in the room, you feel like, I got too much stuff back there. I got too much mess ups. I I got too many issues going on in my past seasons. He really ain't going to take care of me in the future season. He don't want me in the future season, in the next season, because my past season is too messed up. Listen, he's got enough grace for your past season and enough wisdom to lead you in the future season. You're not too far gone, baby. (laughs) He's still got you in the palm of his hand. And when you walk through the seasons of this life, he's got you. One of my favorite verses in the whole Bible is he has never left us nor forsaken us. He is right there. And so today, this is how we're going to end this. I just want to pray over you. Really simple. I just want to pray over you. And I, 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 don't, I, can, I don't know what season you're going through. Me and my wife, we're, 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 we're stepping into one of the most confusing seasons of our life. <laughs> we're, we're about to have a baby, and we're also dealing with, with stage four cancer and her grandmother. It's a very confusing season for us. But I will have joy through it. And I want you to have that same joy. And that joy is not found in anything else besides the grace of Jesus Christ. So I want to pray for you today. I want to pray for whatever season you're walking through that he would give you the endurance. Because the Bible says that, that suffering produces endurance in us. He's building something better in us. So while you're in it, would you bow your heads today? I'm going to bless you today. Jesus, I love you so much. Lord, I thank you for every person in this room, Lord, the person that's on the mountaintop and the person that's in the valley. Lord, I pray for each one of them, God. If they're struggling today, give them strength, Lord. Give them the perseverance they need to get through the next season. Give them the wisdom to take their next step, Lord. Help them prepare themselves, Lord. Lord, help help them posture themselves. Help them get ready to surround themselves and help them let go 
of their cells so you can do all you want to do for this season. Lord, I don't know what you have planned for them. I don't know what you have planned for me, but I want to be more like you. So, Lord, use us. Use me. Use us, God. Make us more like you today through each and every season. Let us walk with you. Bring us closer to who you want us to be. Lord, I pray for everybody that's struggling. You would give some peace. Let there be a peace in the room today, Lord. The peace that goes beyond and before the understanding. Move in our lives, God. We love you so much. We thank you for all you're going to do in our lives and all you continue to do. In each and every season, we will have joy because of you. Jesus, we love you so much. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being in church today. I hope you go out of the season blessed and encouraged. Walk with the joy of Jesus. Sign up for Serve Day. We'll see you at Outpour tonight. I love you. Go have a blessed week.